Hi, Bull Bakers. I'm Chef Gemma Stafford, and this week on Bigger Boulder Baking, we are making these homemade Eggo waffles. Here's how to do it. So for those of you not familiar with Eggo waffles, they are an American waffle that you buy in the freezer section, you pop it into the toaster, and then it's fresh again, and you put butter and maple syrup on top, and they're delicious. When we used to come to Florida as a family from Ireland in the early 90s, we used to get these all the time. We thought they were amazing. And I have to say, maybe it's just a bit of nostalgia, but I still think they're like such a fun idea. They're really, uh, really like, it reminds me of a very happy time. So we make them for George right now. And I wanna share a recipe with you that's pretty much the exact same. So you're gonna start out in a nice big bowl. Into it, we're going to add in a little bit of sugar. We are going to do sour cream. Now the sour cream is my secret ingredient in this waffle. It makes them incredibly moist and just really soft and lovely. To this, we're going to crack in some eggs, just like any waffle batter. As you can see, I'm mixing up all my wet ingredients first. This is always a good rule when doing pancakes and waffles. Mix your ingredients together wet and dry separately and then bring them together at the end and that just avoids over mixing. And then into this, I'm going to add in some melted butter. Yeah, baby, you always have to have melted butter. In my pancake and waffle recipes, you have to have melted butter. It's also what helps them crisp up a little bit. The same with the sugar. And then a splash of vanilla extract. And one thing I remember about Eggo waffles from the store is that there's definitely this nice kind of flavor of vanilla. And then with the whisk, just whisk them all together. Whisk your wet ingredients until there's no more sour cream lumps. And it's nice and smooth, just like this. Lovely. Now pop that over to the side for a little bit. And let's mix together our dry ingredients. This is really simple. A Little bit of all purpose flour, which is plain flour. Just so you know, for George, sometimes what I like to do is go half whole wheat, half plain, just to get a little bit more whole wheat in his diet. He doesn't notice and it also gives them a lovely nutty flavor so actually i really like it and a little bit of baking powder and that's what gives these a lovely rise and then just mix these ingredients together now like i said mix your ingredients separate and then combine them at the end one mistake people make when making pancakes and waffles is they over mix their batter so here's what we're going to do dry into wet just like so and we're going to mix it enough times to spell out waffle. So, W, A, F, F, go all the way around the bowl and get it down to the bottom. L, E, one more, we're doing waffles. S, look at that. Now come here to me, I want you to see this. There's some lumps in here. There's also a little bit of unhydrated flour. That's totally fine. We like lumps in these batters. If you over mix it, it makes your waffle or pancake tough and we don't want that. So lightly combine those ingredients and then we're gonna cook it off straight away. So with my waffle batters, I like to cook them off straight away because once they get mixed, they start to activate. And I want to capture all of those bubbles and everything that's been created here. I want to get it into the waffle iron. So here I have my little waffle iron. It's been preheating. This is George's little waffle iron, super cute. Look at this. Just preheat it, it has a little gingerbread man inside. <laughs> so it depends on your waffle iron, follow the instructions of your waffle iron, but this takes roughly around three tablespoons to a quarter cup of batter to make a full waffle. Careful not to add too much or it will kind of pour out the edges. So for my waffle machine, it takes around two minutes to cook a waffle. Your timing may vary depending on your machine. While my waffles are cooking, I got myself set up here with a cooling rack to cool down my waffles and a baking tray lined with parchment. So once they're cooled down, they can go straight into the freezer on this. There we go, two minutes later, and there's our first lovely waffle. I'm gonna put him on our cooling rack. Continue with the rest of your batter until it's all gone. There you go, that's all our batter. It'll make around six to seven waffles. And once these are cooled, we can put them onto our tray. So there you go, when you have your waffles like this, now you can pop them into the freezer, freeze them flat, then you can put them in a little bag and then you have them to take out whenever you want them. Now, whenever you have a breakfast emergency or just want some really good waffles, pop them in the toaster from frozen, let them get lovely and crispy and warm and then serve them to your friends and family. In our house, we like to serve them with butter and maple syrup on top. 
These waffles are such a lovely treat on a weekend morning and it makes it so much better that they just come straight from the freezer ready to go. There's a very good reason why Eggo waffles are America's favorite toaster waffle and why this recipe is a favorite in our house. They're sweet, they're so buttery and soft and absolutely delicious. And best of all, you don't have to leave home. You can make them right in your own kitchen. If you liked this recipe, then stick around. I've got tons more videos for you to watch. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next week.